Hello everyone. Welcome to the launch of the AppScale Academy. My name is Rachna and I am your host today. Apps have become integral part of our lives. Be it learning, groceries, payments, news, entertainment, accessibility or health. Our startups and developers are building experiences that empower and enrich our daily lives. Today I am honored to share with you 100 such homegrown apps and games that will form the inaugural class of the AppScale Academy, a growth and development program by Google and Meti Startup Hub aiming to train startups across India on building high quality apps for the world. The app ecosystem growth in India is thriving and the AppScale Academy aims to nurture businesses that will write the next chapters of success with their innovation, spirit and talent. So let's dive straight in and begin by hearing from Purnima Kochikar, Vice President, Play Partnerships, Google. Hello everyone, welcome to the launch of the AppScale Academy in partnership with Meiti Startup Hub. Before we get started, I wanted to commend Meiti and Meiti Startup Hub for their singular commitment to fostering an ecosystem of entrepreneurship and innovation in India. We are living in very exciting times. India is the home to one of the largest bases of mobile internet users and is one of the fastest growing app user countries in the world. And India's vibrant ecosystem of startups and developers is reimagining the digital future of our country, building creative solutions to address India's unique needs. As a result, Indian apps and games have been receiving extraordinary interest from users as well as investors. Last year, Indian apps and games saw a 200% increase in active monthly users on Google Play compared to 2019. Apps and games built by Indian companies are also finding global audiences. For example, Ludo King has become one of the most played games globally. In 2021, the time spent by users outside India on apps and games created by Indian companies grew by 150% compared to 2019. Above all, we are seeing innovations emerge from different parts of India, including Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities. The opportunity to innovate is no longer limited to select pockets of the country. At Google, we are invested in nurturing the next generation of talented innovators. To date, Google has mentored over 1,500 Indian startups, helping them scale their businesses and seize growth opportunities. We are therefore excited to partner with Meiti Startup Hub to launch the AppScale Academy. Through the AppScale Academy, our goal is to find innovative apps and games that cater to India's unique needs and have the potential to scale globally. Today, we are excited to welcome the inaugural AppScale Academy class, a cohort of the 100 most promising apprenors who have inspired us by their creativity and audacity. A huge welcome to the class of 2022. This cohort is proving that innovation and entrepreneurship is thriving all across India. Almost a third hail from tier two and tier three cities in India and over 50% have a woman in a leadership position. Having grown up in the coastal town of Udupi, where I started my career through a tech startup, these stats give me immense pride and joy. Each member of this cohort has a unique and inspiring story. Let me share one of these stories with you today. IIT graduates Meet Singhal and Anshul Agarwal's stuttering impacted their childhood and student years and threatened to limit their professional aspirations. Rather than be controlled by their speech impediment, they decided to apply their engineering skills to find a solution. In 2019, along with Harsh Tyagi, they built Stamurai, an app that offered them, and eventually many others, accessible, affordable, and high quality speech therapy through a few clicks on their smartphone. Stamurai has helped its creators overcome their personal obstacles 
while making a difference in the lives of many, many more. Meet Harsh and Anshul. Welcome to AppScale Academy. This is just one example. I can't wait to share the other 99 stories in the coming weeks. We are excited to work with each of you to help you meet your most audacious goals. The AppScale Academy is an important milestone in Google's long journey to enable entrepreneurship and innovation in India. From consistently investing in Android and Play to help entrepreneurs build great apps and find global audiences to building discovery systems based on Google's machine learning and AI to surface the right apps to the right audiences, we have been rigorously supporting startups and developers at every stage of their growth. Our investments in Play Academy and Play Console provide learning resources and business insights to enable companies big and small to build great apps and successful businesses. And our regular Play Policy webinars enable us to have an active dialogue on building a safe and thriving ecosystem together. The AppScale Academy is also launching at a time when apps have been core to the fabric of how we live. During the pandemic, apps enabled us to remain safe while doing what we need to get done, be it learning, ordering groceries, making payments, or staying in touch with loved ones. Startups across India stepped up to evolve, pivot, and create solutions for each of India's daily critical needs. It is therefore gratifying that this AppScale Academy cohort will continue to address uniquely Indian needs. We truly believe that this is just the beginning. India is increasingly transforming into an app-first country. Today, India is uniquely positioned to become a leading hub for global app innovation. There is tremendous opportunity for Indian startups across the country, regardless of size and location, to thrive in the global app ecosystem. All of us at Google are excited to be part of this journey. We thank Meiti Startup Hub for their partnership and vision, and together we are taking another step towards growing a diverse app ecosystem in India and fostering companies that will win on a global stage. Thank you. Thank you, Purnima. Let's take a look at our first category of apps, the education cohort. The apps that help us upskill, learn and explore the unknown every day. E-learning has been on a rise in India and we have many talented startups and developers as part of our cohort aiming to help India with its learning needs. This will be followed by a note from the CEO of the Meti Startup Hub, Mr. Jeet Vijay, giving you a deeper insight into the AppScale Academy class of 2022. May we have the education apps, please. <laughs> Welcome to the AppScale Academy, everyone. We just saw our cohort of education startups that are aiming to help diverse communities in India learn a range of skills online. And this is just a glimpse of the spirit of innovation we are aiming to scale with the AppScale Academy. Our mission with this growth program is to empower early to mid-stage startups with the right knowledge and mentorship 
to drive app innovations for the world. Today, we are pleased to announce our cohort of 100 Indian startups as part of AppScale Academy. Now, these startups were chosen from over 400 applications following an in-depth selection process that took into account their creative ideas and innovation, product quality, scalability, and talent diversity. Now, be it to help people manage their finances better, a social platform for farmers to improve their livelihood, or a community for women to share ideas and foster a culture of peer-to-peer -peer learning. These startups are ensuring that a homegrown solution for many of our daily, critical, and unique needs is today just an app away. Now, two key needs that we have top of mind for India. One is education and second is health. And these are the two verticals that are represented heavily in our cohort of startups. Along with these, we have startups in social, gaming, finance, and e-commerce, representing the plethora of opportunities in thriving new India. While these verticals represent over two thirds of our cohort, we also have startups catering to some of India's other integral communities and needs, such as agriculture, B2B, parenting, and more. Now, the diversity we are seeing in India's app ecosystem is well represented in our cohort at AppScale Academy as well. Almost one third of the startups come from tier two and tier three towns, including Surat, Vadodara, Kanpur, Lucknow, Meerut, Morbi, and many other towns and cities such as that. And over 50% of our startups have a woman in a leadership role. That is something that we can all be proud of. As part of this program, these 100 startups will be trained through a customized curricula, incorporating all aspects of building a successful app for the global market, including UX design, business model, and monetization strategies, international expansion best practices, and data safety and security practices. Select developers will get an opportunity to pitch to leading venture capitalists as well for funding. I would like to thank Google for partnering with us on this vision to build a thriving ecosystem of innovators in India. I would also like to thank our jury members across Google, Mighty Startup Hub, and NASCOM for helping us shortlist this 100 inventive startups that represents India's rising homegrown talent. Finally, congratulations to all the startups. Thank you for being core drivers of India's digital journey and wishing you every success as you move forward. Thank you. That was insightful, Mr. Jeet. So glad to see a cohort that is reflective of the diversity we are increasingly seeing in the ecosystem today with some very unique use cases. Also, I believe that the program is built keeping in mind the exact needs of the app startup space covering all aspects of building, growing and scaling their success. Now on to our next cohort of startups. Digital entertainment and gaming have been on a rise in India. Let us now have a look at our gaming and entertainment cohort comprising some fantastic titles that are going to keep us hooked to our phones in the years to come. This will be followed by a special message from Mr. Bhubnesh Kumar, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. <laughs> In 2021 proved to be a landmark year and a testimony to the potential of India's startup ecosystem. Earlier this year, January 16th was declared as National Startup Day by our Honorable Prime Minister 
श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी टू सेलिब्रेट दिस फ्लोरिशिंग ग्रोथ इंजन टुडे वी आर दी थर्ड लार्जेस्ट स्टार्टअप इको सिस्टम इन द वर्ल्ड एंड एवरी डे वी आर सींग लोकल एंटरप्रन्योर्स अचीव न्यू माइल स्टोन वी आर ऑल्सो सींग दैम ड्राइव मीनिंगफुल सोल्यूशंस फॉर इंडिया एंड द वर्ल्ड थ्रू क्रिएटिव एंड हेल्पफुल एप्स एंड दिस स्पिरिट इज टूडे वाइड स्प्रेड across the country with a new wave of creative app entrepreneurs emerging from different parts of india we at meti value our partnership with google and it gives me immense delight to further boost this spirit of innovation with the app scale academy program launched in partnership with meti startup hub the program will encourage 100 promising indian startups across sectors to drive app solutions for the world startups and developers are key drivers of india's digital transformation journey every initiative to boost the entrepreneurial and creative spirit of this group shall pave the way for a glorious tomorrow i congratulate all the startups as part of the app scale academy and wish them the best of luck on their growth journey ahead Thank you sir. Your words remind us of India's emerging growth story and its strengthening position on the world map of innovation and success. Let us now take a look at the finance and e-commerce apps. The apps that kept us going in the last two very tough years that we all sailed through with so much fortitude and resilience. And after that we'll have Aditya Swami, Director Partnerships Google Play in India, in discussion with our AppScale Academy mentors Tanushree Nagori of Doubtnut and Alok Kejriwal of Games to Win, along with Karthik Reddy of Bloom Ventures, talking about the growth of India's app ecosystem and our future as a digital innovation hub for the world. <laughs> Hello everyone. A very warm welcome to you from all of us at Google and the Meri Startup Hub. I am Aditya Swami and I run the Google Play business for India and I'm delighted to be your host for this session. Firstly, huge congratulations to all the founders of the 100 companies that have made it to the first edition of the AppScale Academy. This partnership between Google and Meri Startup Hub is to truly leapfrog and invigorate the app ecosystem in india apps as you know are changing the lives of every indian and apps that are being built in india are changing the lives of people across the world today india is the hotbed of innovation and the dream of india being the startup capital of the world is not too far away to talk us through the opportunities that lie ahead of us today we have three folks who represent very different parts of the startup ecosystem let me start with tanushree tanushree not too long ago was sitting where a lot of you are sitting today she started this company called doubtnut which is a multilingual doubt solving platform today they have over 10 million downloads and have raised over 50 million in capital and are truly making big strides in the edtech space welcome tanushree lovely to have you here and look forward to hearing your story next up an old friend and a very well known name in the startup world alok kejriwal 
Alok founded and runs Games to Win, a leading games company from India. They have over 400 million downloads and a chunk of them coming from users outside of India. And Alok has been a very vocal proponent of startups building in India and serving the world. Great to have you here, Alok, and look forward to our conversation as we go through this. And finally, we have Karthik Reddy, who is the co-founder of Bloom Ventures. When I first met Karthik, he told me that Bloom is the startup of the VC world. And they have stayed true to that mission. They've invested in several early stage companies, over 150 companies till date, and have had over 24 successful exits. Today, they're in their third fund and are actively looking to invest in early stage exciting companies. Thank you, Karthik, for joining here and look forward to the conversation with all of you through this session. So, you know, uh, the folks on the other side of the screen are all at the beginning of their journey. They're all looking for inspiration. They're looking for advice and their ambition is sky high. So as folks who've been on this ride for a while now, if you had to give one piece of advice to our young founders, what would that be? So, uh, you know, the one piece of advice that I hold very dear to the entire journey that Doubtnet has had so far is being extremely close to the customer, meaning uh, completely getting into their shoes. Uh, we may start with an MVP, uh, but as you are building more and more, you need to make sure that you stay ahead of what their need is and what their sensitivities are. It is very easy for us. And I know, uh, you know, uh, Aditya mentioned that a lot of you are actually building from tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 places. But despite that, uh, even though may, we may feel sometimes that we are coming from the similar backgrounds as what other people are coming from, but it is when you actually speak to the student or a customer, you would realize how different you may be, even though you may think that you are actually coming from the same background. And uh, every five to ten years, uh, in general, uh, how people are using uh, technology is changing very, very, very quickly. Like the way they are studying, the way they are uh, engaging with any any particular apps, etc. So, you know, my piece of advice is just be extremely, extremely, extremely close to the customer. Uh, yeah, I have something, uh, I have a different spin, which you can also add on to what Tanushi said, because knowing customer is obviously most important. Uh, we started our journey and we continue to start our journey with a single motto, which is global first, local later. Uh, we believe that the world is our playground and we have the right to stomp and, and, and play with it on our own rules and our own, uh, you know, in our own way. There's no one stopping us. It's borderless. The app world is borderless. And that's how it starts in terms of for us, the pursuit of excellence, right? <clears throat> when you start trying to serve customers, other than your own country, which you thankfully know a little better of, you really have to face up to benchmarks and global standards. We compete for the US App Store, which is the toughest and the most competitive in the world. And uh, the lessons learned from there are so phenomenally productive. We can easily flow them or use them for our other countries. Uh, the one thing we did to do this, and just this is just a way of thinking through how you strategize, Every app that we've launched has been localized in 20 countries for 20 uh, regions on day one. These are from native speaking, uh, you know, kind of translators and, and, and linguists. So I think the mentality is that the world is mine to, to own. And I will start with the world and my country will be obviously a part of it. Alok, it's uh, amazing to hear you say that because I think a lot now I start hearing in my circles that India is going to be the startup capital of the world. And I think it's thinking like, like this, that's really turning this, uh, you know, vision into reality. So awesome to hear that. Karthik? No, I mean, can't, uh, you know, beat what the founders say because they're at the front lines <laughs> building great companies. But, uh, you know, as an investor, I think my translation of what both of them said at one level is uh, taking them in serial order. So. What Tanushri has also kind of expressed is what we like to see in a lot of founders we back, which is a mission orientation that is unparalleled. Right? So you're solving, uh, you know, we used to have a phrase which uh, um, uh, which kind of expressed that you were sort of incredibly uh, obsessed about, you know, solving for this need, right? And, and if that's not a cultural aspect that seeps down, then it feels like a very short-lived company, 
right? Um, and my wish would be to see uh, Indian companies become sort of timeless, right? Ageless. Like, why, why just have Fang companies in the U.S.? Why not have the equivalents emerge out of India, right? And uh, you know, Aditya, someday the next generation, uh, if, if you have a kid, you should work for an Indian Fang equivalent, not for the G in Fang. Right. So if, if that's that's the level of orientation, I think we should set up our ecosystem for, which also then you know adds uh, to what Alok said. Uh, you know the idea that market size is a limit is just absurd when you can play in the whole world, right? And uh, most uh, our mindset has to change at both the entrepreneur level and the investor level if you really want to build it. Uh, and of course, in, in, I, I would argue entrepreneurs change. Uh, uh, force that mindset change ahead of investors. Investors tend to be one step away, a little bit more risk averse, and say, "Oh, yeah, to kabi hua hi nahi." You know, <laughs> how do you how do you build a global company? From uh, how do you, how do you have a SaaS unicorn? Right? This was the this was uh, everybody would say this outside of three four of us who back such companies till five years ago. Today they're like a dozen unicorns and they're beginning to stomp at the you know border of ten billion dollar outcomes. Right? And so, uh, full credit to the entrepreneurs who take us through those frontiers, but also to imagine that 10 billion has now been achieved. Next, we should see 100 billion dollar plus companies, and maybe someday there will be a trillion dollar company. But it comes with, for each of these 100 entrepreneurs in the audience, it comes with incredible mission orientation to build a company that lasts a lifetime. So my punchline, which has been quoted a few times, is: I feel founders should outlast investors, and companies should outlast the founders. Oh, very nice. I want to go back to something which Tanushri said in her opening remark. She talked about diversity, and today in this batch we have amazing diversity. Maybe a decade ago, startups were the bastion of male metro founders. Today in this class alone, we have one third of our founders who are not from metros, from tier two and tier three cities, and so we're seeing the power of technology. Moving to all parts of India, and over 50% of these companies today have women in leadership positions. This is really exciting, and to see that this diversity is coming into the ecosystem will truly drive a solid round of change. Do you guys see this from your vantage point as well? Do you see diversity coming into the industry as a good thing, and how does this really benefit our industry? So one of the biggest things that I uh, feel, um, you know, what this is doing, if uh, you know there are startups that are coming in tier two, tier three, tier four cities, or there are people from those places who are uh, uh, founding these startups, even if they are based out of tier one places, is that um, for a really long time in India, uh, the subset of people that we were uh, selecting for any sort of job was people who kind of knew English or were coming from the upper echelons. It was basically reducing that entire pool of talent that we could select from, and that has completely opened up today. Like some of the top performers in our company, some of the first few joinees in our company are people who may have studied in Hindi medium, who may not be the most fluent in English, and uh, who are coming from uh, smaller places. What this has led to is that we were able to one, I think, hire them as a startup. Uh, competing with a lot of other companies who could pay well, give them and uh, the firepower within them was much different from people who are only in the uh, top cities in the country. Again, it is not to say that top cities uh, people from top cities do not have a right to kind of win. They of course have the right to even win even now. But this has opened up the talent pool significantly. As soon as you remove this barrier of um, you know people being extremely fluent, like you know the way we are speaking right now from our interview. Uh, process and uh, from the way we conduct, let's say the um, uh, town halls, uh, the way we conduct the presentations in the company, the way we ask them to communicate over emails versus WhatsApp versus mm-hmm. other IMs, uh, you would see the kind of talent and the way talent blooms within the company. And uh, I am sure that is what exactly happens when founders from those places are coming in, and you know if investors kind of remove this barrier of. Um, the person being able to present extremely well, let's say in English, or uh, be able to sport a different type of uh, demeanor. Yeah, at Google, I think our thinking is a well similar lines that if you're building products that you want billions of people to use, then you need to have product teams that 
you know uh, represent that diversity of the market of the users so that's when you can build right products kartik i'll change track to a question which a lot of the folks in the batch today have asked us right and sure. uh, folks i'm asking this on your behalf uh how does a startup which is in its beginning of its journey with a low capital base compete with some very well funded large startups in the similar space so yeah one of the themes so which i've been telling the team this year is like you know we've seen not just in bloom but like we seem to have like a specialty for picking underdogs <laughs> so you know we know this feeling uh you know it's very difficult when there is a number one number two established in the market um and the investor market is you know can be very harsh they can very quickly uh deem this as a if not a winner take all the top 2 3 folks take all market and that doesn't mean that the winner has to be a unicorn even if the winner is like two steps ahead of you uh it becomes more challenging to get a foot in the door um that said i think you know which which is why by the way when we focus on early stage and which is what most of the founders in the audience should focus on you need to have insights and differentiators that others cannot replicate with money right uh so there's got to be a, a a strong edge in the way you think about product or your audience uh not that that wins you the long game i mean the long game uh you you want to serve a lot more customers than what your uh, your early uh, customer base is and you know that advantage might get naturalized or neutralized but i've seen companies which build with that kind of a, a, a clear differentiation or insight into customer behavior be able to stand up against their own irrespective of whether the big guys get funded or not right uh, i mean just i'll throw one example let's say uh, this company called leverage i do right and uh, wants to be the pioneer in study abroad everybody's been doing study abroad for the longest time uh there are others who said oh this is too tiresome to do it let's just make it a fintech play um so there are every there are multiple players but just doesn't mean that because the top two or three are funded he's not able to do something differently and tackle the problem from a lens that they're not able to see that's it it's challenging to get believers every time you're not the hot favorite already and that's how the venture market odds are stacked right uh, it's very difficult to displace the odds just as it's not different i think if you look at all the sports analogies it's very difficult to displace champions or like you know uh, uh, star players in a particular team uh, it's difficult to get them to step down you have to you have to win despite those odds uh, and it comes because you bring something to the uh, to the to the table that the others can't replicate and i think that should be the way you think about your startup career not just today but through the 10 15 year journey Guys, I like the sports analogy. This makes it so real that it's actually mm-hmm. happening all around us. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the other interesting question we ask from we get from our from our class is, what's your advice, users, and go crazy after building a large user base, or should we start thinking about a business that starts making profit from day one? I think um, uh, from my lens, you know, if you're if you're fundamentally changing customer behavior, then. meaning new behavior like what tanushree tanu uh, she tried uh when she first started out and i think your your the fact that you're winning on behavior change is far more important than figuring out what the right monetization model is because you're establishing a need right which didn't exist before or was never delivered in that fashion before right and so uh and maybe i'm uh, i should i look knows better but it's different when alok was building his first game in a certain space was the 10th game of certain space so it's uh, so the same similar analogy for me is you know when you go to saas businesses typically you're not fundamentally changing how organizations work right uh, they will not adopt you if they don't believe they uh, they can use it every day even if you give it to them for free so i'm like a total anti uh, non monetization you know uh, principle on saas for example but if you're if you're taking a consumer behavior where you can generate dau or wau on on a consistent basis far outweighs any need to monetize or crack a business model very early uh and uh, one of the perils i mean now i think indian investors and entrepreneurs have a lot more courage 6 years ago i would have said we don't have that kind of courage to build new products and new behavior in this country right now i think we're being far more gutsy and saying oh it's very cool behavior i don't care when it monetizes but i like the fact that you know we've gone from 1 million to 5 million it's far more important 
and and at a consistent pace like there is actually the area so it's not as always most things in life it's not one size fits all but you each of you should be able to apply that lens to your business and see what's more important i think karthik you colored it well i think there are three distinct phases aditya that each of these our entrepreneurs will witness irrespective of whether they're doing enterprise or consumer b2c b2b c2c you know the 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 mvp stroke startup stage the excitement stage where everybody loves you and feels you are the greatest inventor in town attracts money and you can get away with you know building great product build experience and probably not forget but ignore the monetization money part then a little bit in the mid stage you know you're trying to prove your usefulness unless it's a blow out product which is very rare to get but if you're in the middle you're kind of trying to prove that this is actually useful right and therefore usefulness one of the metrics is people want to spend money on it and the third stage is when maturity comes which is what karthik again said na lifetime the the company should to 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 last beyond lifetimes yeah you have to make money and you have to make lots of money and you have to be very proud of making money and you don't have to be shy shy of saying that i am revenue first i love money i love to put money in my bank because that's what the top fortune 500 and other companies do and i think the challenge is to con- just to kind of showcase what's happening and this is a very interesting analogy which people will in- instantly re- recognize look at the great startups that have gone to the market today right they're all public and karthik you'll see the narrative on a friday before public was i got gmv i've got users i've got blah 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 and monday after going public when the pop when the market beats you down now you're being forced to think profit which never existed in your vocabulary so i want to just explain that profitability ebita is a vocabulary of the world per se in business you can choose not to use those words till you can get away with it but it's never going to get away forever and i think the last part you know i love karthik and i love his uh, his i mean i love bloom to begin with but vcs are very elusive wo bhoot log hai bhag jate hain kabhi kabhi you know you don't find them you don't find ghosts when you want to find them boss they find you so if you're an entrepreneur wanting to live forever you better manage your own cash and how to get your own cash by making cash right so that's my uh, learnings that you know vcs don't last forever but profits do so i know we're running on we're coming on time but uh, let me kind of uh, wrap this up with i'll tell you a uh, i'm going to give you a sentence and just tell me first what comes into your mind and i'd love to hear what's top of mind when i tell you india startups in 2025 what what do you what what what's the picture that you can see i think uh, the coming of age uh, i think there will be a, a nice balance of what it is building for things that india couldn't have imagined getting built but also public company post public journeys becoming stable and becoming new poster children for everybody else to follow us i have a i have a hindi word for that uh is dhanda you know we'll be all about dhanda no more concept and talking and you know evangelizing was that dhande ki baat business ho raha hai yaar startup hai business karenge that's all it's all be the same you know these are just ideas that have already come and now it will just become part of our i mean there's a cement plant and there's a tire plant and there's a startup and we'll all be in the same uh, you know calling ranks so i don't know if uh, 2025 is uh, you know when what we are saying could um, you know get actualized right. but i think that is that is where we need to get to for example uh, you know a lot of our friends uh, from 20 years back uh, built many startups like one person built many startups and exited many startups in uh, this valley i think that is where we should be getting to that um, in like you know make a profitable startup and uh, get ahead of it very nice awesome. thank you thank you tanushree kartik and alok and on behalf of all four of us to all of you our very first batch of the appscale academy the first is always the sweetest We look forward to working closely with you. Some of the folks here will come and do sessions as well, and uh, we look forward to your success. And we look forward to staying in touch. All the very best, and the world is truly your playground. Thanks, Aditya. That was very insightful. And now we are on to the next category, health. 
health has been a core fundamental need emerging out of the pandemic and our local startups and developers continue to create meaningful impact in the lives of people with customized well-being solutions that cater to our physical health mental health and more let's have a look at our cohort of health startups <laughs> Wow, I'm particularly excited about some of those. Thank you for doing what you do. We have now reached our final reveal. These are apps that are part of our everyday lives. Apps that are companion to parents as well as pet parents. Apps that are helping farmers to connect with each other. Utility apps that are making aspects of our daily lives easier and much more. Can we have the final reveal of the day please? That was one grand unveil. And with that, we reached the end of the event. But before we wrap, I would like to thank Meti and the MSH team for being such phenomenal partners as we begin this journey together. I have no doubt that we can take the Indian app ecosystem story to the next level. Grooming good talent, driving more innovations, building high quality apps and games that can see global success. I would also like to thank NASCOM for helping us shortlist these 100 bright innovative minds as part of our esteemed journey. And lastly, I would like to thank all the startups that applied to AppScale Academy. Without you, we are incomplete. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to partner with you. We cannot wait to see you succeed and make a lasting impact that your business truly has the potential to achieve. Thank you all for joining us today.